Hello. All right, I'm here. Hello. So we are actually joined by Apari for the beginning today. Taxi might show up at some point, but this is who we got for now, and I am excited to start off this cast. Uh, he actually did play in this game, so um, maybe a bit of extra info is going to come out here, but um, we can just hop I right mean, into this highlight. Only only thing I'm going to mention is comms, if right. that's fun. Yeah, yeah that, that works. Just avoid spoilers, and I think we're all yeah, good here. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I will. I trust I'll avoid. you. <laughs> but our key matchup going into this is going to be Stav versus Sarverus, who apparently I can't get their names uh, correct uh, if you watched Honestly, yesterday's stream. But uh, Honestly, these two are very formidable in the lane. Yeah, I mean, they're both very scary to play against. Both showed a very solid Twitch um, when we were playing, um, or when we were watching the games yesterday. Sarverus actually does have the heads up in this lane. Both of them have played Lucian, otherwise their champion pools are very different. Um, Sarverus has a 5.44 KDA in this matchup specifically, and Stav has been struggling. Normally he's a pretty strong player, but only 1.73 I'm seeing here. Um, was this a concern for you guys going into the game? Uh, uh, honestly, we were fairly confident going in. Uh, again, I like uh, the pick the pick that you saw me do yesterday was kind of what we were planning here. We were planning the set jungle once again. I am a big proponent for that pick, by the way. Yeah, uh, I mean, you made it look great yesterday, so. Oh, yeah, no, I, I love, like, actually, fun facts. Before the set buffs, I've been playing that shit in solo queue for, like, four months straight. That's crazy. Yeah, I've, I've been practicing. Um, yeah, no, I definitely thought like uh, we definitely were a bit more cautious this time around than we were the than we were the first time around. I'll, I'll say that one. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, what sticks out to me here is um, both of you guys have a lot of champions that really just right off the bat uh, might be something you want to ban. Uh, Kaisa is a champion that I know that both Stav and Sarvis play to a pretty high degree, so that could be something that you're looking to grab up um, on this blue side. Obviously, you know how the draft went. Um, so yeah. I'm just talking into your ear, but um, we did point out Fuger's Orin yesterday. That 37 KDA is really sticking out, but on, only on a two-game sample, it's nothing too crazy. Um, Avery Darius being 12-3 and three is absolutely terrifying. Um, and Jonas Shivana absolutely steamrolled that one game earlier, so I probably um, would be looking to take that off the table. But um, we don't really need to take our time here. We can just hop right into draft, uh, and you can share your thoughts sure on thing. that if you want. Uh, I was cackling maniacally when Kane they was gave you left Kane. out of... They gave me Kane. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. Uh, but they did get mean... Twitch, though. And Twitch has been first picked in, what, three out of the four games before this? And then um, the other team was able to grab that for Sarverus. Um, his Twitch looks really good, but obviously he's not a one-trick like Stav. So it's a bit higher prio for you. But Mythic being able to grab the Nautilus, I think, is pretty terrifying. Um, but Neil Araka is... Definitely been the counter to Twitch. I don't think he really has anything you can do into it. So I do like what you did um, in draft there. And Stav is super comfortable on Nila as well. Um, just looking at the bands, I don't think we need to go over too much. They all make um, a lot of sense. Thresh was left up, which I find um, a little interesting. But um, Honan didn't end up picking it. Uh, do you have any insight on your thought process there? Uh, well, uh, well, all right, so initially what we were thinking, right, is the bands were probably going to look like Fuger, Valor, and me. So mm -hmm. we were just thinking, whatever, we'll just let Stav have the, have the Twitch, right? Yeah. And then they banned Honan and Zerath, and, I, and like, I just started laughing. I, I laughed like a maniac, and then we first picked in. Yeah. And then, and then from there, we just kind of knew that Twitch was likely gone. Right. And we know that we also didn't ban the Nautilus, so likely that was coming right after. We banned Shivana, and then what Jonah could pick after that, I was thinking something more tankier, not so much like Xin Zhao, but hey, here we are. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just a pretty good champion for Jonah. He's performed pretty well on it uh, in the past, so I think it makes sense um, mm. for them to grab it here. Uh, but know. looking into bans... Uh, Annie is pretty interesting. I don't know if Valor really has an Annie in his pocket. And I know Fiona yeah. is a champion that Stav plays. It's possible that they just didn't realize that he was going to be on the Nila. Um, I mean, I know that he plays it, but uh, I've had to deal with it a few times, so um, they might not have. No. I have not played with or against Valor that much, so the Annie pick was kind of out of... The Annie ban was kind of out of left field for me. I wasn't too sure what that was. Mm -hmm. I mean, Oriana Orn is a good way to round out your comp. 
Uh, Neil and Oriana together are completely brutal. I hate playing into it, love playing with it. It feels like if you get the combo off, you just win the game no matter what, but... Oh, yeah. No, obviously, definitely. them slapping a Yasuo on the end gives them something similar. Uh, you have enough setup easily with the Nautilus and the Syndra. Um, and Yasuo into Orin is a matchup that we don't see too much, uh, just because Yasuo top is not like the greatest thing in the world, well, but it is a well, I mean very strong matchup into the Orin. Yeah, uh, only thing is, with Yasuo right now, like, as a bit of a Yasuo enthusiast connoisseur, um, for the longest time, ever since the addition of that broken lethal tempo, um, yeah. like, the broken iteration, not the one before, right? Right. Yasuo and Yon were balanced around it for so, so long, and in my opinion, it ruined the champion, but that's my own personal opinion. Uh, I can but now that, that it's, but now that it's gone, they're kind of in, like, this awkward spot. I don't think Yasuo top's terrible. I just don't think I'd be picking it right now. That totally makes sense. I feel like it just complements their comp well. Avery's comfortable oh. on it. Um, <laughs> we will have to just load into game uh, and see how that went. Um, going to try to get that pulled up right now. But just in terms of composition, I do favor... Um... Oh, wrong one. Y'all's a little better. I feel like Rat's really well set up here. Um, Kane is the only one that I don't love in the comp, but obviously that's your one trick, so it's <laughs> going to be good regardless. Um, Alright, this might just be me oh. here, like, coping, but I think I've been beating the one trick allegations pretty hard. Yeah, I mean, I didn't mean it in that sense, I just meant, like, most played. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, when I first started playing the game back in Season 7, uh, Xin Zhao was the absolute worst thing uh, for Kane to play into. But that's when oh, yeah. level 2 crab was the meta, so I don't really know how the matchup goes. Do you have any insight uh, on that? Yeah, um, the matchup here, uh, it is Zin Zhao favored, but if I'm the one piloting Kane, I think it's me favored. Yeah. Jonah actually does have to flash out there, oh, which yeah. definitely hurts his chances, um, but that was so, traded for yours, and that's yeah. double sums burn for Mythic. This is a crazy start to the game. So, they did the same thing last game, oh, and we were- wait, stop, here. just flash- no, that's Starburst. Yeah. I can't get it right. Starburst Star flashes in, picks up a kill. Uh, Fujir falling then, down uh, low here, and Mythic's actually picked up by Stav on the other end of the fight. back there. This is such a messy fight. Yeah. And Stav's in good position to take out Starburst yeah. and possibly also Jonah here. He's going in pretty aggressively, picks okay. up the double kill, might go for the triple and to complete it. And no, Valor uh, steals that one from him. The cloud nope, is nope. completely gone. <laughs> no level one Penta. <laughs> yeah. Neela is definitely a champion that you can do that on, but not having the dashes does hurt a little bit, but her Q-base damage is completely disgusting. Um, looks like Conan and Stav both taking a reset here, and um, the bot lane for uh, DDD, obviously, uh, being dead, is going to be a little bit late to the lane, but they oh, should have the early advantage, and Twitch was able to pick up um, a call, which is actually really good for him. Uh, both junglers are starting on Raptors. C curious to see how they're going to clear. Yeah, I mean, my eyes right now are on bot lane, and Valor's falling down super low, but so's Bean. Oh, and uh, not both quite of a them kill. sub 100 HP. Valor trying to heal up off of the potions, but any missed stuff from either of these players is probably going to result in their death. Oh, wait. Stav's oh. trying to hit the wave here, but um, is getting Kane. zoned off really well by... Kane is about to hit level 3 down here. Oh, is this an angle? Oh, I think this is an angle. Yeah, Mythic's looking for an aggressive hook, but he is caught up a little bit here. It's interesting to see that they weren't able to grab oh level boy. 2, and Stav able to cash in on his third kill of the game. Um, Apari moving forward, trying to pick up this kill, but Sarvish should just be able to walk out here. I think bot lane's kind of Jover off that. I mean, 3 and Onila is a bit hard. What happened? Oh, no, from the layout. Oh, yeah, ordered. it's bound to, like, a, a key. Uh. Game has slowed down a little bit. Five kills going down to the first three minutes is pretty crazy, but uh, both junglers just trying to clear out here, get back on track. Scuttles are spawning, and um, bot side clears, or bot side clear for Jonah hasn't been done, and Kane's trying oh. to clear out the top side. Um, Avery looking for an aggressive trade here. Fujir's fallen down to about half health. Yasuo can kind of just dictate this lane, and even when the Orn hits 6, he doesn't really have much of an upside because of the wind wall. 
that is the one thing you have going for you. Fujir successfully um, did parry the tornado with his W. That unstoppable is pretty much his only tool. And Kane is looking oh. for a wraparound here. Might be able to find a kill. Avery trying to get as much damage out of Fujir as possible to try and take him out. Hits the Q, goes in. I don't think he's going to be able to find this though. Kane just does too much damage. Oh, well Burns the flash to get away. But I think Apari might just be able to pick this one oh, up. Wait, but Avery's saying. looking for the kill. There's no way he gets this. <laughs> There's no way, right? No. Surely. Dashing out? Oh, wait. Maybe? Wait, montage play? No, he's, he's oh, just no. done. <laughs> oh, wait. Jonah going mid lane. Oh, wait, does Valor fall? Yeah. Oh, Valor's dude. able to get picked up. Jonah making things of plays in the mid lane, balancing this out. And we are joined now by Taxi. Yo, yo, yeah. yo. All right, well, you missed a uh, crazy beginning of the game, Taxi, but I'm glad you're here um, on the cast. Uh, Stav got a few kills pretty early on and now has a 3-0 lead, has that Dirk already. Um, but Apari making plays around the map, he was able to get a kill um, in both bot lane and top lane, which is setting his team up pretty well. But uh, as we've seen uh, yesterday, this Twitch is super powerful and definitely could take over the game. Yeah, especially with how short range champions like uh, Neela Kane Orin are, like, they want to be facilitated by the Oriana ball. Big team comp. It looks like just really trying to funnel this Neela, especially with champs like Oriana supporting her here with movement speed and stuff, and Orin just being Orin, so. Yeah, I feel like it's really going to come down to execution of their comp. If they're able to get that. Uh, ball onto them, and Avery actually just roaming down to mid lane. He's trying to pick up a kill onto Valor, and I think he might get this. No ultimates available. Um, Apari's in the area, could look up, and they just don't want to overextend too much. Could put them in a bad position. But it really yeah, does all side, come down to execution. Queue, Never mind, we're just not allowed to talk. Jonah's picking up the pace, and Stav looks like he's in a bad position here. He's chasing for the kill. Sarvis is trying to get away, but I think he is going to end up falling. Jonah flashing onto Stav, trying to pick him up, and I just don't think they have it here. Soraka is a disgusting champion. So much healing. Jonah flashing in. I guess he just now flashed, but Stav is just not dying. He's able to pick up another one, unstoppable, and he should get that one on Jonah too. Kill actually going over to Apari, but that's seven kill participation on Nila at six minutes. That's fucking disgusting. Hot take. <laughs> that... I feel like I feel like Stav would have died had I not landed the ninety percent slow W on Zinzo. Yeah, entirely but I possible. Think the real problem is the fact that um, Nyla was level 5 when Twitch was level 3 there due to Nyla passive plus how just ahead that they were and EXP and all that stuff. So, I mean, the just pure base stats early game, level 5 to level 3 is, I mean, they just do no damage. Yeah, Nyla Raka is it's, it's a hard. very good combo and they're playing it super well here and getting 3 kills at the beginning of the game certainly does not hurt. Um, First Dragon is going over to them as well. I don't really think Twitch is going to be able to pressure um, much of anything, um, probably until he hits his like two or three item spike at this point. He's just so far behind on the pace. I'm surprised that Neela hasn't picked up her first item yet. That's gotta be Collector, right? That's the new build path for that. Yeah, it's... Oh, and Bean looking for the solo kill there. Um, Shockwave comes out from Valor, but I think Bean should just be able to get this really wow, clean solo I'm kill there. i surprised. Uh, according to my sources, Syndra cannot one-shot you, so I'm, I'm actually very <laughs> surprised that Syndra was able to get find lethal there. I was just from the, really well the debate from last night. <laughs> <laughs> I did not read that. That was 500 <laughs> messages. Uh, I read all of I like skimmed all of it to like see what everybody said. And when I saw that, <laughs> that Psycho Karen said you can't one-shot anybody. Oh, okay. Like, and now, actually, it looks like Apari might just be caught out here. He just had no chance to survive there. Neil Araka is here to join the fight, but they're a bit slow. And I just don't think there's an angle here unless Valor can set something up, but without Shockwave, he's missing. And stop just dashing into the wall um, for those watching. Fifty canceled auto attack. Yeah, I mean that is the curse of Yasuo. Of Yasuo. Yeah, it looks like there could be a play breaking out here. Jonah is uh, moving down. Looking for the wraparound, and the control ward is present, so there's no way for them to see this coming. They're pushing up too far. This could be the shutdown going over onto Stav. And Jonah 
holding yeah, his ability is really good. smart here, not burning the dash early, but the silence just completely dooms him. Avery going with the ultimate super aggressively here. Since Syndra does not have her ultimate available, so Valerie's actually just able to walk out on that. There might have been a miscommunication there, but there no, be Beam flash flashes you. in, Soraka yeah. ultimate comes in clutch. <laughs> really good map awareness from Honan there. That was a bit of a misplay by Syndra. She just flash e instead. I mean, flash W instead of flash Q Wing. So gotcha. I mean, I'm not sure. I think Apari gets the wrap off Beam, here though. Bean just staying yeah, up, with, and yeah, can't ultimate the comes through. Almost wait, she oh, gets the nice. kill and trade. Died to Scorch. Killed the Scorch. <sighs> Scorch is a good rune, despite what people will tell you. But Bean actually able to get the revenge kill there is that makes it worth it. He's not doing too shabby for himself. Actually able to pick up the first legendary item in the game. Yeah, Puts the Syndra's going to be really position. strong, especially in the 1v1. Syndra versus Orianna is tail as old as time, but I do think it is fairly Syndra favored right now, just because of the fact that Syndra just has all that burst, but Orianna is better with, for playing for her jungler, so... Yeah, I mean, the one hope that DDD has here is that Syndra can just push the Nila away when she goes to pop the ultimate. I think that could help them out a lot, but the Nila is just so scary, and no one's been able to take her out yet. Huge bounty on her head. Yeah, especially after the space that looks like they're trying to come through, but I'm gonna decide to stop. There's definitely gonna be a collector in base and probably tier two boots as well. Yeah, Sarver is clearly not in too bad spirits. He was dancing a little bit in lane and stop returning the favor. Um, <laughs> it does remind you that this is a more for fun tournament than we'll see throughout the season. But um, actually no grubs taken uh, at this point in the game. Uh, quick oh, disconnect from Avery. Stop going in for the ultimate. I don't think they get anything out of that um, besides uh, Sarvis's flash, but... Twitch flash is pretty important. It basically means that he's just going to die next cooldown. And Bean is just dominating the mid lane here. Really well played yeah. from him. This is this is kind of how this matchup goes. If Syndra gets to ahead, or Orianna has the lowest base MR in the entire game, I think. That's so ridiculous. It becomes very, very difficult for her to, to play. I mean, she gets more MR when the ball is on her, but... Just based out wise, I do. It's in contention for bottom three, bottom five. Oh, you mean might have lower? True. But I don't know. Avery's just fishing for something here. He doesn't have a CS lead, which is a bit surprising. But I think the death is probably causing that, and he had a couple unsuccessful grubs. Um, Jonah's able to pick up the first grubs of the game, um, getting them to three. But I don't know if there's enough time for them to respawn. And Valor looking for something, but he's just going to take so much damage from Bean. Yeah, it goes Kale, Yumi, Orianna. So Orianna is the... Good Shockwave there. It might keep him alive, but it also might not. Um, it really depends. Twitch is showing up here. And Valor flashing. Flash That's another burn, flash expended. Flash from Zinzao, and and Honan trying to get, to get something here that kill. silence yeah. is actually huge. Apari showing up into the fight, getting a lot of damage down. And... Kane is Ross stuck in the middle of the entire there, team but, here. I mean, he is pretty tanky, and he does have Ross online. Nila pops goes trying to get inside the team fight, but looks like both teams want to disengage. Nila may be looking for a dash, but that'd be a little psycho. Yeah, I mean, I think walks, they could have killed uh, me there. I mean, with the Soraka there, it's basically impossible. I feel like. Yeah. You now Sab and Honan are silences, just gonna and try and keep this wave out. They do have a lot of healing presence, so it should be fine. But this. Second dragon should almost definitely go over um, to Rad at this point. Yeah, I think the red team needs flashes more to play than blue team, so... It'd be nice this, my, this is just going to be a solo kill. Nope, oh, Soraka, Soraka ultimate, ultimate again. Honan MVP for real right there. Yeah, no, he's Soraka playing so well. Really good map awareness. If he's in a tough spot here, I don't think there's a world in which he dies, but he definitely doesn't have an opportunity to kill here. He's a bit behind on items, and the thorn mail is. He just has to be wary him. of using his wind wall on. Yeah, or he just TP to bot wave. I'm not sure why that was. Bean was able to pick up another kill here, but I think he's dead on the backside of this. Oh, wait, Sav is Black not able to pick that up. But Apari, the smart that jungle smart. camp treatment delivered, and now Mythic's taken over as well. This game is looking so rough if you ignore mid lane, but I think Bean does still give them a hope in this game. But it's yeah, a lot of sure. pressure I on mean, his back. Syndra is able to kind of deal with um, champions like Nila because Sarver he has that should back, be able to turn but... this fight. Kane is about to get ultimate, but I don't think it's going to be soon enough. He dodges the E from Twitch. I 
But yeah, he can just Guys spam the ability and is just able to pick it up as soon as he exits his body. Valor might we be able to get this tower Twitch. here. We definitely saw the effects of, um, oh, this is a really bad TP. I'm, oh, okay, he can't get it in time. Yeah. But. Uh, Jonah is stuck between a rock and a hard place here. Gets dropped by the Orn full combo, but that's all the damage Orn has, so Jonah can just press R and walk away. Orn ultimate oh, is a huge okay. wasted cooldown there. Valor should just be completely caught out here. Sarvis finally getting some gold over to his name. And that puts him at three kills. He might be able to get Bork on this back. Yeah, especially with the shutdown that he got on the cane just a second ago, he definitely should be sitting on Bork. Probably Bork and a half. Oh, and huge hook like coming up from Mythic here. And Sarvis walking up, but he has no mana, so he has to just auto him to death. That E is he not going to come no up. He flash, but... Yeah, with no Ignite, no E, it's going to be hard to find lethal. Yeah, Rat... I mean, uh, DDD is found their way back into this game pretty comfortably, sitting at only a 1.4 negative gold lead. Um, Twitch being able to find... Yeah. Avery might be able to there. get this if he decides to go for it. I think it would be... Oh, there he goes. Oscar okay, this is what we want to see from the Oslo. You can want to play aggressively. No one else hard. in the area, but yeah, yeah. I mean, Orin can just walk away. I mean, but it's fun. The never That's killing Orin. Yeah, yeah. He, he got to press his buttons and feel cool. But he does need to be careful. He can die to this Orn. Mythic but showed up, but I think... Area. Yeah, he should and just be fine. Orion is also Bean looking? Pop. She needs to be careful not to get... Hooked, he but. held E, but... I guess he just wasn't able to use it. Looks for the oh, kill there, but Jonah should be able to pick this one up. Yeah. I wonder if the replay didn't show. Maybe Syndra shove was on cooldown. That's what I was thinking, because otherwise you should just be able to do that and keep you yourself alive. You should just do it every time, yeah, yep. for sure. I don't know, this Neela just probably the, the window that they... They probably saw him use it on the wave, and that was their go-to to go in. Yep. Capitalizing pretty well on that misuse cooldown. Yeah, Sarvis is looking for something here. I don't think Valor survives the Pops ultimate, which he does. He flashes forward and hits Especially the Blasco, the preventing Valor from getting out. That shield is massive from Archangels, though. I hate that. There's some brace. Not only did Twitch flash, but he also used heal and is now getting picked by Horn. Yeah, I mean, there is the no area. way out of this. Yeah. Booger picking it up, getting 350 gold there. That's an extra. Jonah's looking to maybe get anything here, but I just don't think it's likely. Nautilus is in the area, he's but he's 2v5. Yeah, it's one more in Stav's pocket. 7 0 and 4. Way too hard with the Ciroc in the area, just laying down heals. But pretty big overextension from the 80 carry from DDD. It's just not a pick you're allowed to go for when Seraphs is online. Yeah, Especially I mean, when they have a full mana bar that didn't he notice. just came out of. Yeah, he just came out of base also, so. Yeah. He had that full mana bar, which means he had the full value of the shield. Like. Oh, I didn't know how that works. Shield. Interesting. Yeah, the it, it's of your current mana. You get a shield based on your current mana. That's so interesting. Uh, Sintra was able to pick up that bot tower, and as we noted earlier, there's not a second grub spawn, so um, DDD isn't going to have that on their side. I don't know, this game has slowed down a bit, but it looks like Rat is just in complete control. Um, if DDD can get this dragon, there's a possibility that they can get themselves back into this game, but I think it's just going to be really hard to do that. Oriana and Nila are both in the area, you have that ball combo set up, and Kane can deliver the ball if Nila isn't going to be able to do it. But that's a lot of damage put down on Dahona. No ult used yet, but that chunk is very significant. Hari going over the wall, making sure his presence is known in this pit. DDD is trying to set this up, get the damage down onto it. It's possible they can secure it. The teleport is expended from Yasuo here, or not making an attempt to cancel. It does have the TP of his own, and that's a huge Yasuo ult goes into the backside of the fight. Start. What, Starverus? Starverus gets picked off there, and that's a double kill for Nila. Stav looking to make it a triple, is able to find one, maybe looking for a Quadra. And... Yes? Quadra kill for Nila, not able to find the Penta though, being able to just walk out. That is ridiculous. Yeah, Stav having a game Oriana here. Ulti, the three-man Oriana ulti into the three-man uh, Nila ulti really did just absolutely tear through. DVD this game, like, 
And with that team fight going the way that it did, it seems pretty impossible to come back. We'd need to see a monumental throw. I will say that level 1 Fiesta really set the tone for this game. Yeah, I mean, it was yeah, a good I invade. Mean... They had it set up, but then Stav just completely turned it on its head. Nila is a very good champion. Getting extra attack range at level 1 with her Q is um, not something that you can ignore. Yeah, and funneling a champion like Nila early, especially with the Soraka in the back pocket, like, she becomes immortal and does so much damage. It's crazy what that champion's capable of doing. Yeah. With Avery having the Bort completed, um, I think he might have a chance to get Orn here, but I don't know. I just don't think you're able to do it fast enough that it makes it viable. I don't really know what their upside here is besides Syndra, just hoping that she can find a pick. I mean, as we saw from a lot of the games yesterday, Twitch does have that scaling factor. I mean, you would realistically take a six item Twitch over most six item any carries, but Neela might be one of the exceptions to that rule. She is incredibly good, especially yeah. with something like an Orianna to speed her up onto the targets, because the only downside of Neela late game is the fact that she's shorter range than the average AD carry, so it can be hard to find and hit targets, but things like Orianna, Orn setting you up. Yeah, I mean, it's just so tough to play against Neela, because even if you do get the- Oh, that's an ult burn oh, from Mythic, he's looking for this, really and then they get the hook down onto Soraka, they're trying to take out Soraka to start the fight, and they're able to do it successfully, Avery getting that one in the back with us, oh, three man Neela, all getting so much damage on here, drops the counter strike down, no one's able to hit her. And Jonah popping the ultimate, trying to keep himself safe, but that Orn ulti is amazing from Fujir. They're able to get so much damage down here, and that is four, three kills across the board, spread between Nila and Orn, and that's just going to be a Baron for them. That's yeah, there's ridiculous. there's a little bit of a misspacing from Twitch. She ended up getting hit by that ultimate, and the more people she hits with their ultimate, I believe, the more that she heals, and the last thing that you want the, that Nila to be doing is just healing even more, like... I respect the attempt, you know, you realize that you're probably going to lose trying to just go for a Hail Mary. You get the Soraka, but with Orn in the general vicinity, able to get there, it, it, it makes the make the post fight ugly. Yeah, I mean, really good execution there. And the one thing that you can't sleep on is just Anila in the game. <laughs> as long as she has any sort of items or damage, um, if she finds the right play, she's able to get things done. And that is something that we saw, I believe, in the, the playoffs last season. Um, I think also from Stav, insane play that he made. Basically just one shot, uh, an entire team was able to close out there. Actually, I think it, that was this probably from Evan, if I correctly, Okay, but... nice shockwave coming out from Oriana, but... Yeah. If one Bean's more Q into ulti, able to find something, but Apari looking for something here. Jonah trying to get back on top of him, and the bot lane is here to support him. If they can find a hook, this could be big, but <laughs> Sarvish just playing out of range makes sure that he's safe, yeah, getting a lot of damage down, hard. but Soraka okay. healing is disgusting here. Syndra finds the fight, doesn't get a stun off on anybody, but they are pumped up. Soraka OD gets stunned, Nautilus does fall, Flash coming off for Orn onto their backline, and it's just going to be a slaughter from DDD, collapsing from every which way. It's not much that you can do. It fight looked decent at first, but... Soraka probably got, like... 4,000 healing that fight, and there's no heal cut yeah, on the side of DDD. I'm not sure what the thought Sorak process is was getting. there. Can we check the, the Moonstone value there? An additional 1,600 healing. Uh, that's hard to really know. Because she's not in proximity, right? So it doesn't... Yeah, so it doesn't do anything. Yeah, it's not perma -proc'ing. yet. That hook could have been big, but Bean looking for something gets a lot of damage down on the tuna, but doesn't have ultimate Sindra available doesn't anymore. Doesn't have that unlucky power, unlucky power yeah. Trying to commit onto this. Oh wait, Jonah Soraka making huge plays there, dashes the all the way into the back of the fight, shot, flash dash, and no, now stops here, gets Three online, pops the up. ultimate. He's able to get so Which much damage. Two kills open, lined up. He doesn't have ultimate. Valor just should just be dead here. The map. Yeah, Zanya's is expended, but it's not gonna do much. Being not Unleashed able to find a kill. Out and just a little bit of a tickle. Does have to burn flash with Twitch in the area. And it's looking like Twitch does want to try and maybe find somebody on the backside, yeah. but he realizes if he face checks and they're, and they're there, he's just going to get CC'd perma right. and explode. Avery trying to put down as much pressure as possible onto the bot side um, to stop them from getting soul, but I think this is just sealed. 
Emil being 15 0 5, three and a half items, it's just so hard to fight her. Avery Especially might with be able Soraka to get the tower, but he's dying items. for it for sure. And they pick him up. All their health bars are completely full. <laughs> he did not stand a chance. And with Infernal Soul on the rifts and looking very uncontestable for DDD, we just have to assume that this game is probably just over. <laughs> oh, then what the fuck did you just say in chat? <laughs> Bro. Classic Conan moment. <laughs> Excuse me? Oh my god. Oh my lord. That's the guy I do it with in rank 24 7. Insane pathing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at this point, you just have to just play safe. Eventually, you're going to lose the game. You don't really have a way back into it. Twitch is not going to hit three items before you lose in the slightest. Especially for the fact that Twitch needs, like, four items, and he doesn't even have his third one, like... Ornald is down, Jonah gets knocked up by, everyone else stays safe, really good Cinder knockback, but that means that if Neela decides to go in, she has no way to stop it. And Apari looking in for something, but they don't really need to hit champions here, they can just hit um, the inhib and try to keep these minions alive, but Mythic walks up just too far, they're able to take him down. Sarver is trying to get some damage done, but he's just too far behind. Oh, he's he's basically like spitting at them. <laughs> like nothing is happening here. Bean no does get I taken out. The him. sole hope of his team. Zani comes out, so he's not even able to get anything. Sarver slides under tower. Avery hitting an ultimate could be able to find something here. Valor actually getting a double kill, and they are just hunting down Avery, and that should be game, which is going to eliminate DDD from contention for the first day of games. So we're not going to see them until the last game that we stream today. Yeah, I mean, just really solid game from Rat from beginning to end. I mean, getting as ahead as they did in early game, and I mean, this Neela played with her lead perfectly. I mean, 16, maybe even 17. No, 16-0-9, I mean... That is so good. Insane KDA. That yeah. was crazy pathing. Cannot give enough be. credit to stop. Uh, on this game. And Apari set them up with... super well at the beginning, but just overall, this game was played super well um, by Rat. Started off well, and they just had their foot on the gas the entire time. I don't really see a world in which they were threatened to lose this one. Oh, and also that... keeping clutch with his ultimates and stuff. Like, well played from all. And with that, the Apari 10-10 Kane win rate in scrim zone remains at 100%. Interesting. Pretty good win rate. It's a really good yeah. one, right? 10 10? 11 11 now? No, 10 10 is just the numbers at the end of my uh, YouTube channel. I stream almost every day. Hey. Uh, <laughs> We're here using <laughs> this as a free promo? Hey, look, man. He asked about the numbers in my name. There's a story behind it, but I'll save it for a different time. I thought you meant like you had a. Yeah, play I, was, 10 games I thought you meant like, all 10. as of patch 10 10 or something. I was a little confused. Okay, but, do you want the lore behind the 10-10 uh, at the end of Apari? Drop it Are we doing this? something. Okay, yeah. but Not, not on casting. Yep. Yeah. Alright, we can move on here. I will pull up the next bracket. Uh, unfortunately, DDD is eliminated, but that does mean that we see the finals from Saturday. The winner of this match between Project Laundry and Rat um, is going to get a free pass into the Fearless Draft um, best of three. That did occur on Sunday. And DDD is actually not out. They still have a chance to win their next game, uh, which would get them into that um, best of three. But as we move on, um, Taxi, what are your thoughts? Do you think Project Laundry is going to pull it out? They've been looking pretty good so far, but they haven't faced Rat. So do you think they're able to pull that off? I think it depends a lot from draft. Um, just from the way that both of these teams have been playing, they've been playing really, really on top of it. and. I mean, Rat obviously slipping in their first game to DDD, but um, coming back in the run back in loser's bracket and taking it over them this time, which, um, I mean, overall, from all the games that we've seen from Rat in this loser's bracket, they've looked pretty promising, and I think they've been playing really well. But on the other hand, Laund uh, Project Laundry has not lost a single game, and I think that's due 
not only to the fact that they're just playing really well, but also, like, I think they're drafting really well, and they're putting themselves in good spots to win. So, like, that last game that we just saw, I would almost always favor left side drafts, you know, having big buttons like Orn and Oriana is generally just better in <laughs> scrim zone settings as opposed to something like Yasuo top. And I mean, Syndra is good, obviously, but she doesn't have a big Bomba ulti. And I'm not saying that that's like a bad thing, but I am saying that it's easier to play something like Oriana. We see, I mean, we saw that Oriana go one, six in lane and she came out like five and seven or six and seven. So found finding the value, like, so I really do think it'll just come down between the drafts between these two teams, and I hope we see a pretty balanced and even draft. Like, hopefully one team doesn't just, you know, <laughs> lose immediately in draft. Lose immediately yeah. on draft, because we've seen that that's a thing that happens in scrim zone sometimes. Oh, uh, often. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, where it's just like, I, I want to play this champion. It's like, are you sure you want to play PS real mid? It's like, yeah, yeah, no, it'll work. And it's like, okay, and then they lose in the, before the game even starts. So hopefully we see competitive drafts that you know, play to both teams' strengths, and we can get a really good, really close game. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, we can take a look at um, these champions to watch, but we don't need to spend too much time on it unless you see anything kind of jump out. I do want to take a quick look at the key matchup, which Tusini is actually playing ADC this game. Um, I guess that's a little bit of a oh, spoiler, but I wanted to fill it out correctly. He's played two games, um, and I guess they're both Caitlyn, because it's impossible to play no one. Um, but obviously, <laughs> he's never played against Stav if he's only played it twice, so... Uh, what are your expectations for Tusini's ADC? I haven't seen it be played. You haven't seen it be played. Um, do you have just off-rip guess? Uh, any clue well, what it's going to be? Given the fact that his opinion on Lux is just so incorrect, and, you know, <laughs> the almighty support god has spoken. Oh, yeah. yeah. Psycho Kara has never been wrong yeah, in his life. <laughs> oh, I thought y'all were talking about Honan. No, about Psycho Care. You missed all the drama last night. It was so funny. I read it when I woke up. But oh, I I just didn't bother. But uh, no, it's so funny. But um, <laughs> uh, I love you, Psycho Care. If you're watching this, you're my goat. Honestly, yeah. But, um, <laughs> but uh, no, I, I think Tusini's a pretty good player, and I mean, a lot of mid laners either play AD carry or they play top lane. Just and their mechanics from mid lane oftentimes can transfer. Especially, I think Tusini's mentioned playing things like Akshon, so. I expect that his mechanics in AD carry should be pretty good. Well, I don't think he plays the... Oxford. I think I implanted that to your head last oh, night. Oh, okay. My bad. I was just making but, shit um... up. <laughs> but, um... Well, then, My never mind. But, uh... Yeah, I think but we can I just mean, take it into draft. I think he'll be fine. I think he'll be yeah. Surely that sets in top lane. Surely. Yeah. I mean, as we've seen before, this is probably going to be that Zareth support coming out from Honan, and we've already yeah, seen the set sure. jungle, which did jungle. really well. Um, Very impressive last time. But so Julian we'll see if he's did able get to his um, one of his favorite picks, which is Jarvan. I know, I know him as Jarvan and Zen Zhao, and last night he made me, you know, I'll remember Gragas? his Gragas. So, yeah, I mean his Wukong. He's like eight no. <laughs> I know it's like his most played champion, but I don't think of him when I think Seven of Wukong. Now? Yeah. With a nine KDA. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> He's not that good. I, I don't. I don't know why I don't think of his Wukong, but yeah. I, I do think of his Jarvan. So, and Jarvan Oriana, pretty good. The and they have a lot of immobile carries on Rat side. You know, you have the Jinx, you have the Zareth, and they do have a Kali, which is is a very mobile carry. But yeah, Valor's there's just a is lot a of pretty good pick for him. PL. No, I, and I think I think a Kali is the top. most overpowered like mid laner on the patch dude they are nerfing the ever loving sin out of her next patch amen like akali is very 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 good right now i think she's disgusting so but i mean talking about big buttons pl i mean they've got jarvan they've got oriana got nautilus they've got samira they are going in poppy going in and against a jinx zareth it it can be hard to play Jinx Zareth in games like this, and it can be even harder to play something like Akali when you have Poppy and you have really tanky people like Nautilus and Jarvan, and these champions get really tanky. Oriana likes to build a lot of HP. She likes to build Seraphs. Like, this game, off of draft, I think I prefer PL, but only because I think Jinx is hard to play. But I do think the Tom Kench is, is can have insane value. So I think if Fuger, I assume will be on the Tom Kench. I assume it will be TK. 
I assume it will be TK Katana. I could be TK support, Zareth mid Akali top, obviously. Like, yeah, I set don't see them picking but Akali I and having anyone but Valor play it. I assume it will be Tom Kench top. So in team fights, if Tom Kench clutches it out, get good eats on Jinx as Jarvan engages, then or when Nautilus presses R, I th I think there are avenues from Rat to take this game, but it relies on good positioning from Jinx and Zareth and good like understanding of how team fights are going to be played by Tom Ken, and then Akali needs to find value, obviously. So. Yeah, I mean, this is another one of those drafts where we see one team just go kind of scaling and then the other team plays a very aggressive kind of snowball -y comp. Um, I think Hong and Tusini do have a pretty good upside towards the end of the game with the Orianna uh, Samira combo, but Jinx Zareth is going to absolutely cook you if you get to the late game. So it really is yeah. up to the execution of Julian and Tusini, especially. Um, Noam has a lot of tools to enable both of these picks, but. Um, I think if Project Laundry doesn't get a good lead here, it could be really tough for them to play out this game. Yeah, I mean, if if they're taking... I think that if um, PL is taking the fights, like, way too slow, then... And allowing there to be more of a neutral game, if that makes sense, where, you know, you're kind of doing the thing where you stand around and look at each other and objectives and don't just commit to a fight, then the Xerath poke and the Jinx range definitely can start to add up, so... The, what I want to see from PL this game is I want to see decisive, snappy team fighting with good comms. So it's just like they can pull the trigger, you know, Nautilus hook, Nautilus R, Jarvan going in. And if they do that at the beginning of fights and they don't let themselves all get, you know, like a fourth of their health taken, half their health taken, then I think that is how they want to be. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. really, really just depends on execution. I think either For team sure. does have a good shot, but... I agree. I don't know. Mid lane is what I want to watch. Valor popped off on Silas uh, last night. If he can do it again on Akali, I think that spells big things for them. And Ahamaba's mid lane has historically been pretty hit or miss. Um, he tends to do better when he plays ADC's mid. Um, but uh, we, we will have to see how that goes. I think this is a bit of an interesting role swap from them, putting Tusini down to ADC and Hong into the mid lane. Um, but I think it can definitely work if they're comfortable on these champions. Um, level yeah, 2 is hit first with how by well, Rad here. Um, how well Hongbaba played last night on AD carry. Yeah, yeah for these sure. These are not trades that you want to be taking as Orianna. These are oh, wait, Valor trades. flashes in, but flash for flash, he's not able to find it. That could have been huge, though. See, one, one important thing to note on a mid lane matchup like this is one of these champions has Doran Shield second wind, and the other one does not, meaning heavy trades like that always are going to favor the Akali, like, just look at Akali's health bar, she was 1 HP, she's almost half, like, it's ridiculous. She also has the highest base HP regen, and, like, out of every single mid laner in the game, and she has the highest base MR, and she has the highest base armor, yeah, that's really well designed, and she has the highest health scaling growth. Fun fact for anybody that doesn't know, Akali has more base health, level 18, than Set and Alawi. That is true, that is just base stats ridiculous in my opinion but oh but a nice flash coming out from serves you but Kali is going to be able to get over with the perfect XP or with the E what's he called some shirk it's shadow shirk or something shirk and flip shirk and flip that's what yeah I mean set has the hell I mean the the shield but but, I mean, he's a bruiser. He should have more health than a Kali late game. She's an assassin. The safest assassin in the game. She has Shroud. It's so dumb. Well, if you want to get real nitpicky, LeBlanc is ridiculous and safety. If you count her. But, but APZ that has two clones when her ultimate's up. So, But... Yeah, Apari actually does have a really big uh, flank set up here. It looks like they're not sure. I think he must have walked over that ward, though. They're both playing pretty conservatively. Yeah, this should be a pretty cut and dry dive, though. Yeah, but no one flashes in. Looking for an aggressive play. They're able to get a lot of damage out of the Honey, but I don't think they're able to find the kill. And no, that's double kill for Jinx. That's the last person you want to see it get on. Apari almost did die the tower there, but survived with about 50 HP.
Yeah, it was a really well played double haymaker or face breaker, slamming them both into each other and being able to tank an extra tower shot with the with the with the haymaker is it means he is quite good in those dive situations, but I mean they were so low and with the exhaust coming out from Zareth, just there's nowhere they can go. Joel playing pretty aggressively here, um, does have a CS lead. Hong also able to find a CS lead um, in his lane, but the rest of the map does seem to be pretty in favor of Rat, um, especially that bot lane, and I think that's the lane that we really need to watch out for this game. Whichever ADC is able to get ahead, I think can completely dictate the pace of this game. It's also a fake gold or fake CS lead top, I think, because he should be catching that wave under tower, so depending on how much he gets, it should be even top lane. Okay, he's down two. I think he missed a couple under tower, but it, I mean, it happens. So, I mean, top lane's about as even as it can get. Yeah, Hong in a pretty good position here. If he's able to find a shockwave, which he does, he's going to walk up with that shroud and a really good EOA from Valor. He's able to keep himself there, but he takes it. Why would you take it? He's probably nah. going to just die here, and Hong able to do it with Orianna passive. He takes it. <laughs> Valor. <laughs> Finger itching on the trigger stage. on that one. Oh, really? Well, time dash coming out from Samira. But yeah, no one might just die here. Stop able to get yet another kill. Three down. kills. Self plug. <laughs> you know what? If you're not your own biggest gasser, then you're like a fake fan of yourself. So real. Joel and Fuji are boxing it out here. I don't really know if there's an advantage to either champion in this matchup, um, but... I would think Tom Kench would... I, 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 from everyone that plays top lane, I just hear that that character is insanely... just does so much damage, but I guess I hear the same thing about Poppy, so... Oh, he actually walks back into the yeah, trap. You see me falling down low here, and that's the fourth fall, kill. Yeah. This looks exactly like that game we just watched. <laughs> Stav is making it known that he he is the he is the AD carry to watch right now. Yeah, making a pretty big statement. Honestly, I just like the way that Rat have been playing with their dives, you know, around with their jungler, the ganks, rapping, just everything that they've been doing just feels really nice. And on the you're annoying, Nom. You're like gonna take so much damage. Hey, he's got the shield, and Apari is still just sitting behind them in the bush. Zareth ulti, probably not going to find the kill here, but Seth's going to pick it up yeah, if he doesn't. Uh, Ultimate is available yeah. and just immediately drops it on and Noam's head. Apari, probably going to survive. I think they can redive. No, they can super redive this, especially with Jinx ulti. But yeah. it's looking like they're going to opt into not. I mean, Windwall is down right now. Julian looking for a play. I think this is actually the first gank that he's and done. Yeah, this should be Stav is looking for it, but Flash the barrier out, is not going to keep him alive. Oh. Shutdown going over to Samira helps her out a little bit, but 1-3 on I Samira is not <laughs> where you want to be. He, he needed to walk into the tower. I think the barrier fell off right as that last tower shot hit him. So it, Yeah, but... I mean, overall, I mean, the, the Samira lost a giant wave on that, and... I mean, flash. you can just say it was a one-for-one one flash for flash, and that you lost... The, she lost the wave, so it's way better for the Jinx there. A little unfortunate she had to fall, but... Yeah, just tempo is being kept up really high. Also, neither of these top laners have based, by the way, <laughs> and they both have TP. <laughs> Fujir should base. That is the Bye top items. lane experience. <laughs> they both have TP. <laughs> but to see if you back, then you give up your any claim on the CS advantage because the other person certainly isn't going to do it. Joel's running super low on mana, so we might actually see it come out from him. He's oh, channeling he's right now. Valor missing the E, but he's able to dash just a bit closer to Hong um, with the recast onto the Shroud. I mean, there's no but way Julian's in the area now, the and he just cancels it with the ult to pick it up. Wow. Yeah, I mean, there's no way Valor can ever kill there, right? Because, I mean, yeah. he just missed E, and he still dashed in. That's a lot of balls. I guess he was just going for poke. I mean, uh, I know some of He's having fun. Use their ultimate to poke, but... Yeah. Yeah, Julian's actually had a pretty quiet game here. He's able to pick up a kill, but his only impact on the map being two ganks mid at nine minutes is not what we've seen from him so far. Uh, I think Nom thought he had to hex flash up and just flash on accident. Yeah. It's a little unfortunate. Well, now he has hex flash up, so he can't do it either. twice in a row. 
But yeah, this is this has been a like a uh, out of character, pretty quiet game from Julian. I would agree. And with the ultimate being committed to that mid kill, probably gonna look to. I'm not sure. Just clear, clear bot side camps. Maybe look for another wrap on the Sakali. There could be something here. But with, I mean, Akali does have no. Yeah, I mean, there is no ultimate ability up. Nice shuriken flip. Set pops ghost. Gets he does the, get the flip back, but I back, don't but think he's going to be able to secure a kill on Julian here, especially with flash up for him. Oh my Not god! Shockwave and then the double Insane and coordination, is... you see the ping come down and then really immediately well they go in. Oh, this could be a lot of damage. Yeah, Flash is going to have to be burned by Joel. That's the strength of the Tom Kench. If you ever play too close to tower, and he, it's similar to Cassante, where they just abduct you under tower. It's a sketchy game you have to play. And... Yeah, and no, I'm trying his best to defend here, but there's nothing you can do into double range as Nautilus. He He's going to hope to try and get... He oh, does dodge the ulti. It's nice. going to hit <laughs> Julian in the jungle. <laughs> if Joel gets stunned here, he's probably just dead. There is no ultimate up for old, oh, but not charging it might be his downfall. And Trying yeah, he's able to pick it up. Tusini actually is able to find a pick here, oh, but it's this, traded back. That's a but Hong should be able to pick down. up a kill on Honan. And, and yeah, yeah, this is really well played. You know, um, PL getting back in the game. Shut big shutdown going onto the Samira, and your Oriana being up 3-0 against the Sakali now with that roam is going to be really impactful. So, I mean. Yeah, but but I mean, with the team comp like PL, I mean, gold lead matters less since they have like you know the big buttons like we mentioned before, you know, Oriana Jarvan. So yeah, and what I'm noticing right now is that this next dragon's up and Set Nakali Ultimate are available, and um, Oriana Shockwave is not yet, and no Nautilus. Um, is going to make it really tough for them to contest this. Julian actually definitely realizing that just going for oh, grubs, nice. but he gets cancelled. But now Noam over the pit trying to get something done, but the entire team's here. Julian's getting caught out immediately. Noam falling down kind of low. Uh, Stav looking for something. And yeah, he's just able to find another one on Hong. He has six kills so far in this game. He's looking for another one onto Noam. That's going to be seven. And, I mean, Stav is just getting so fed in this tournament. Oh, and he's playing this so well. Into Zapper? Yeah, and they should gonna secure another, another one for him. Yep. Wow. His this team <laughs> helping him out so much here. Out of his mind. But yeah, that was a well-timed showstopper from the set, canceling the uh, canceling the Jarvan EQ over the wall, trying to escape, realized he didn't have his team there, but being forced to stay on that side of the wall, and it just leads to an insane fight by Rat. And... Engaging onto the Akali here, but with ultimate and E available, you have to imagine she's just going to be able to walk this out. Might actually be trying to go for a turn. Yeah. Gets half health. Good Zareth block from Tusini there, but he just walks right into a Q and eats a bunch of damage. Zara the ulti is coming out. It's probably going to kill Tusini. I thought you were able to dodge 100% of those, but um, apparently that's not how the champion works, and he does damage. Yeah, I, I didn't know that you. I thought Zerf would be just like missed every time. Yeah, like looked like looked cool. Right. And did no damage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know I'm but, <laughs> getting dove on, but he, there's no way that you take this guy out. <laughs> but he's going. He's trying to scrap. Uh, hey, Fujer used to be on his team. Brock. He's trying to get some revenge here. But now Noam just getting obliterated by Onanir. And yeah, this is that neutral game that we were talking about. The Zerf and Jinx poke is. If, if they get super ahead like this, it is going to be pretty hard for PL to, to necessarily play. Yeah, I mean, Ori being ahead is one thing, but you really did want the Samira to be the one with the lead here. Um, I think Ori's going to struggle because she gets a little outranged by the Zareth. Um, so we'll kind of have to see how this goes. Julian has a good flank here. He's trying to find a pick on to Stav, but um, doesn't actually have Cataclysm, so it's really hard for him to play this. We don't really care about top lane here, actually. Hong's falling down super low. Might be able to get picked up. And yeah, there it goes. Top lane, still nothing happening. But I guess we can watch it. Actually, Fuji might be able to find a kill here, kill. but Joel saw his ultimate. Oh, he missed. Oh, That's he bad. Missed. <laughs> And Fuji's able to pick one up. 
It's just falling apart all across the map right now for P.O. If a Nautilus hook hits somebody in the forest, but no one's around to punish, did it ever hit them in the first place? It's so real. This is a 7k gold deficit for Project Laundry, by the way. Yeah, just <laughs> went from 2 close. to two to 7, about his tip of a hat, so... Yep. Jarvan does have Cataclysm That's... here, could look for something, but he doesn't really have a team there to follow up, and Poppy just teleported top. No coordination there. Oh, he tried to get the flash. He doesn't quite get it. Tucini going in, and he's not going to find anything. He gets the ulti out, but Stav is just going to get that. The shutdown does go over to Julian, but he's already gotten his first item, so you don't really need that much more going on to the Jarvan. Huge stun coming out from Honan, actually, and that saves his life. Really well played by Honan. And Joel, once again, just in a tough spot here. I don't really know what he can get done here. He doesn't have the ultimate ability. No, I'm hitting another hook that didn't actually hit because no one saw He's it. He's going for the solo kill? <laughs> he honestly probably could have gotten it, but... I think he and there it. he goes. Oh. He was trying to give it over to Hong, but it didn't quite work. Um, now trying to find something on Devour. Good Poppy. Um... Sephas presence, getting the knockout there on Akali, but oh my god, Jinx does so much damage, and that gives them the initiation for Valor to go in. He's looking to find something here. Fujir trying to pick up the skill on the gnome instead, oh, actually. Might be able to be the one to find it, but no, Shockwave comes on in the back of the fight from Hongba by able to kill Valor, and now Fujir found his kill, and now he's trying to run away, but he's taking so much damage, and now Stav's here. This could be bad. You've seen his ultimates down. He's just lost all of his stacks, and now Stav getting so much damage off the free hits, but I just don't think he has the speed left to chase. Apari looking for a kill under tower here. Does have Showstopper available to him. Pops the W and he's actually just going to die to tower. Uh, this time the W, but unfortunate there. Shut down, going a, over to Jarvan. That was a lot of damage coming out from that tower. But... Maybe a tactical choice here, though, you know? If you if you give all the shutdowns to Jarvan, what's he going to do? Build a tank item and then, like, survive <laughs> for an extra two seconds? <laughs> True. Well, it was a bit unfortunate. I don't think that actually spells anything bad for Rat there. Yeah, not the most impactful death. But, yeah, I mean, this game has just been, it's been rough for, for PL. Yeah, Tusini finding an angle here only has one grade, though. And now is stacking up. I actually was able to find that kill onto Stav, but unfortunately the shutdown no longer available for him. But he's going to be looking for an IE pretty soon. And here's actually a really good initiation. No one able to find the hook. W coming out from Set. Set actually hops away from the... Um, Samir here keeping himself alive for a little bit. He might be able to get out here, but Julian dropping the smite, trying to get himself killed. But Julian taking so much damage from Honan's ultimate. Now Valor's on the backside of the fight, trying to find something. Tusini going in, getting a lot of damage dealt. He's stacked up pretty high, but it's so hard for him to go in here. Valor goes on to the back of the fight. He's looking for Tusini, but he's in the wrong direction, not able to find it. Honan aiming, but oh my god, this is crazy. Three kills for Project Laundry, only one coming back on the other side from Rat, and they've closed the gold lead by about a thousand. Nothing significant. Jinx was not in that fight, I don't think. She got picked at the very beginning. Right? Oh, okay. So she just respawned. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long, long fight. <laughs> it was a quite a lengthy fight. Yeah. Project I mean, Laundry honestly, might if... be able to leverage this to get a Hex Dragon. If they can get four of them, that could put them in a pretty good position. But realistically, um, Rat's probably going to end up with Soul here. And with the Zareth and the Jinx, that is brutal. They actually waited long enough for Valor to be able to TP into this fight. Now I think it's really doomed for PL. Um, they are fighting with a man advantage, but it's only a 4v3, and they're <laughs> far enough behind that that might just be an even fight. Now we've hit the full 5v5, and there is no chance you're denying this dragon from the rats. Yeah, they'd need to find a miracle engage. Uh, or that could be it, or if Fujir could just end, but no, he's tanky enough that he's completely fine. Julian walks in, and he almost entered as much as Tom Kench did. There's no follow-up from there. Poppy's actually able to split the fight, but they've already lost members, so it's not as good as they think. Tusini popping the ultimate, and it actually is just doing nothing. He doesn't have enough items for it to be significant. He's able to find another kill on the Stav, but Stav had already gotten a lot of damage down here. Um, so all he's doing is forcing someone else to look good in this fight, and it is a 5 for 1 uh, in favor of Rat. The Baron is not yeah, up for the them to Samira take yet. Yeah, the Samira just does not have the damage to feel as impactful as you would like. Yeah, this game feels like it's at 30 minutes just because of how many kills have gone down. It's 26 to 15. 41 kill game in 19 minutes. Very, very abnormal, but... 
most of these kills, you know, swinging towards the side of Rat, and when you have a 10-5-10 Jinx on two and a half, almost three items, should be able to get it relatively soon, and your Samira's entering her second item, it it's rough. Team fights are hard. Especially with this exhaust being able to just be dropped. She might be able Valor? to get a kill on Valor here. No. Yeah, that's just a raw solo kill. Yeah, well played from Tusini here. But that I don't should be a know how much it infinity does edge. Yeah, it might delay the Baron, but I don't know if they're going to go for it off spawn anyway. Um, and I don't think it enables PL to be able to get it. Yeah, not not with the positioning that everybody has. Like, Samir is on bot half of the map, so... But I mean, if PL can keep finding fights where... Uh, similar to that one that we saw before, where... You know, they find a pick on Jinx or something, then maybe that's that seems to be the only saving hope that they have. But and these raw team fights, just pure five v five. Yeah, I don't know. It's tough. I feel like Samira just isn't dealing enough damage, even if she does get in on the backside. Like yeah. she was on top of Stav and Honan in that last fight, and it felt like she was like tickling them. Their health bars were not really going down that much. With you completed, that could with... change, but you really want to have a lead with Samira. You don't want to be on the back foot like this. The other ADC is up, basically a full item on you. Jinx just needs to back to complete this. Um, yeah, the main problem with Samira just there. falls in the fact that Exhaust is ruining her life, and since she opted in for Barrier and not Cleanse, it's no way to remove that Exhaust. So. Right, I mean, you're keeping yourself alive for a bit longer, but you're not dealing any damage while you're alive, so it doesn't really matter. A few players walking a little bit close, but Tom Kench is actually the only one that you don't want to catch here. Um, no one forced to flash away, and Poppy able to knock the Kench out of the fight, but you just used all of your engage on him, so... It's tough to get too much down without expending these ultimates. And it's hard enough you have follow-up. And now Tusini's down to half health. No barrier up. He's basically out of this fight for all intents and purposes. And now Fuchu's right back in it. And Hong also at half health. And even lower. And now Hong is just dead. I feel like there's a chance that Rat can just end here. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a chance, especially with the... Jinx passive. I mean, the only... Yeah, Jinx passive and three grubs, like, it's no six grubs, but... Yeah, it looks like they're just gonna run back and go for the Baron, though. It's a safe play, it's respectable, you know, don't don't want to throw the fight, potentially. Now they are just starting up this Baron. There's no way for PL to contest it. Jarvan could maybe go for a seal, but I think they have, what, two people just sitting over the wall. There's no shot that he's able to get anything here. Valor looking for something, yeah. and now Oriana is here to support it, but you've just delayed him enough that it's going to be really hard to contest anything here. And Honan is dealing as much damage as a mid laner should be. Hamaba just getting absolutely destroyed by Valor here. Valor flashing, ulting over the wall, able to find this one, and Apari just dunks Jarvan right out of the pit, and they don't need a smite to secure this. They just have a jinx. This should almost definitely spell the end of the game. Valor able to pick up a double kill. Got himself to an even state in this game. 6-6-4. Six, six, and now Fuji's going in. Tusini just gets absolutely ass blasted by Honan. Um, and yeah, I mean, Joel's just dead. It's over. Yes. 5 for 0 ace. I mean, this Jinx just got so accelerated at the beginning of this game. Like, there, there was some hopes that you had. You know, Orion in the mid lane doing pretty well, but... I mean, Set just facilitating the map really well. Jarvan wasn't there to to help with any of the plays that were being made. So yeah, just a really, really solid clean game, game by Rat. Rat. Yeah, reminiscent yeah. of last game. They're, they're definitely on form for today. Uh, the, whenever this was played, like yeah, they, that, that was the last game day. for Saturday. So yeah, they, they had a good Saturday, that's for sure. I won't clog up the casting food done anymore. I'll just leave y'all to it. Okay. Yeah. Peace, peace. Fun, See ya. And this is the final bracket um, for Saturday, which means that seating is complete for the second day of the games. Um, ISP, unfortunately, O2ing out. So they did receive fourth place. Um, and the rest of the seeds, uh, Rat is sitting pretty in first place to get a free buy to the Fearless. 
um, BO3, which means we're not going to see Rat again until tomorrow, and they're going to be in all the games tomorrow. Um, and our last game of the day here is going to be PL versus DDD. PL does get um, side select because they seeded um, in second. Uh, and DDD is going to not get side select uh, because they were seeded um, in third. I now need to see if I can launch League with Vanguard disabled. Um, it may or may not let me because this... Yeah, okay. So I'm going to cut stream for like two seconds so I can restart my PC so we can actually watch the replay. Um, actually, no, I think I downloaded it, so we should be fine. That's awesome. Thank you, Riot Vanguard. I'm really glad that you brought that to League of Legends. Wait, I think we're good. I think we're good. Um, okay, hype. So I am going to pull up draft, make sure I get side select down and everything. Um, two seed versus three seed. Um, okay, DDD did receive um, blue side here. Um, PL opted to pick um, red side going into this. Uh, DDD, I believe, had a record of 1-2 going into this, and PL should be sitting at a 2-1. Um, so PL favored, and the last time they did play, PL was able to come out on top, but I think we're looking at completely different um, rosters here. Uh, yeah, so actually for PL, for the rest of this tournament, their roster is going to be Noam top lane, Julian jungle, Tusini mid, and then me and Jacob um, are the bot lane here. And then for DDD, they also um, ran a sub. They're running Corn in um, the top lane over Avery. Um, so <laughs> a bit of a different uh, team here. It's like it's different teams playing, um, essentially. But I don't know. Uh, there's anything we can really, uh, anything could happen here. Yeah, both teams just coming off of uh, rough losses against Rat. So, I mean, they should be in similar mindsets. And, you know, the fact that they want to win to be able to make it to that uh, fearless draft. But I'm trying to remember. I know that PL Yikes. won last time that they <laughs> met, but. Yeah, uh, I knew my record versus our versus was bad. I, I didn't know it was cooked. this bad. You were literally getting nine point three three KDA, one point seven seven. Yikes! Um, there is some decent overlap in champions. Um, I guess it's just Zeri actually. Um, yeah, and no overlap in our common champion. So it looks like Zeri was only brought up as kind of a contested pick, um, and he's also just been outperforming me in the ADC role as a whole. He's 42 and 17 in the position with a 5 KDA. Um, I'd like to say that 98 and 75 with a positive or above 3 KDA um, is still pretty solid, but he obviously has solid. my number in this matchup, so we'll have to see I mean, if that plays into anything. But here are the champions to watch. Um, so if you have any thoughts uh, for drafts, between these two teams. Excuse me. I don't I don't think I've ever seen Corn play before, so that that'll be interesting. Gotcha. Um he played very well on Metabusters last season. I think um at the beginning of the season it felt like he had some champ pool issues, but he really turned it around and uh started picking champions that people really didn't think he was going to play and performing pretty well on him. He has a very good Darius, very good Renekton. Um there's a few other champions that uh he plays that I'm not remembering off the top of my head. I know Mundo comes out as a pocket pick sometime. His Aatrox is pretty good. There's another one that's up there. Probably Ornn. Um, but very solid player. Yeah, yeah. This is the wrong roster for PL, so um, I'm going to fix that real quick. Don't know how I managed that one. Who's instead of... Oh, it's like all, all sorts of wrong. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. I did read it off before and then like immediately messed it up somehow. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm just curious as to what champion Jonah manages to get his hands on this game because it seems like the difference in his Shavana compared to his everything else. Because I know we saw him play Zach and um, I'm literally mind blanking on what he played like literally last game. I don't remember what he played last night. Yeah, Zenzao. I mean, he, he, he performed pretty decently on Zenzao, but. I mean, it, Here we go. his Shivana was just absolutely tearing through. So 
I mean, I assume that that'll be banned, and I'm curious on what he's going to, what the adaption is going to be for this game in the jungle, and also Julian coming off of pretty, pretty invisible game, honestly, last game, so I, I kind of want to see how he's going to adapt his playstyle as well, but Jonah's not the type of jungler like Apari to, you know, dive with his team. Usually when I think of Jonah, I think of more farming kind of characters, like even when he's playing things like Zenzawa, so... Yeah, he usually oh. just power farms until he finds the exact opportunity he needs to take, but he doesn't look for as aggressive plays um, as someone like Julian or Apari would go for. Um, although Julian did have a pretty quiet game in the last one we just watched, so if he doesn't mm -hmm. pick up the pace, uh, sure. we could just see a slower paced game, but kicking it into draft, um, here is what came through. Um, Twitch falling down a little bit. Uh, I will say probably some of that was uh, me being subbed in and having a bigger say in draft and not uh, having really experienced uh, the Twitch meta um, from the previous day. Uh, Jinx is countered pretty hard by Twitch. It's the one champion you don't really want to play into. Um, and especially with Sarver is having such a good record versus me, I feel like our bot lane is a little doomed um, just looking at <laughs> draft. Uh, Mythic, we saw his Thresh earlier as well. It looked pretty solid. Um, Korn getting that Comfort Champion, as I mentioned, under Nectin, I believe it's his most played. Um, and Noam just kind of trying to cancel it out here with the Orn. Um, everything seems pretty straightforward up in the top half of the draft, but what are your thoughts on these jungle and mid matchups that we're seeing at the Dude, end? This mid matchup is so funny, man. It's literally Lux versus Syndra. <laughs> Wait, no. Is it Seraphine mid? Please don't be Seraphine mid. It is Please not Seraphine mid. mid. Do not worry. Yes! That's the Psycho Carrot matchup! Syndra <laughs> versus Lux. Was it Syndra versus Lux, or is it Lux versus Zareth? Did he change his argument halfway through and I missed it? Yes, he changed his oh argument halfway through. Oh my god! <laughs> He his argument became that Syndra can't one shot people. <laughs> but she can. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I'm glad I stopped get, reading. No, I got this. But she can no, but she can never get in range for ulti. But Lux can get in range for ulti, and also Lux Q oh, so true. is the easiest thing to hit ever. Um. So, so apparently Lux should just be completely running this matchup since Lux is the best champion and he's being nerfed right now. Right. Yeah, um, we'll have to see. And we'll Syndra have to see. sucks. So hopefully. Bean is able to stabilize, you know, and, you know, not make Syndra look like such a bad champion that she obviously is. But as, th that is so funny that it's Syndra versus That Lux. is fucking awesome. But, <laughs> but this yeah, should load so. any second here. <laughs> That's awesome. That's Rockstar. If Lux wins, Psycho Carrot is just the go. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he is anyway, but he will uh, <laughs> be yeah. more solidified yeah, he'll, like, if that does happen. Himself. But, um,. Wait, and Tusini was the person arguing about Lux and he played at this game? That's so funny. That's so funny. Oh my god, that's so funny. To Kill Street. Gnome. But... <laughs> I'm like kind of stun locked right now. Uh, oh, this was funny. Yeah, we had an immediate pause and we just <laughs> typed a lot of slash commands. I think if someone yeah. all chatted slash resume right at the beginning, yeah, that would have been it. Uh, I don't know. Suffer. <laughs> but uh, we do get to see the um, the nine KDA seven and zero Wukong busted out this game. Yeah, I mean, but, if um, he loses, that would be that would change some things. But, I mean, can he really but... lose with Lux on his team? Best champion in the it game? might be impossible. But, um... I'm not sure what the general opinion on Seraphine is right now, but in my opinion, that character, if she can get, like, four items, which I know is kind of hard because she's a support, but it is expedited with First Strike, she feels impossible to team fight into. Sona... I, I, Sona is, like, same thing, but... Yep. I forget sometimes how bad the spectator client is. I looked over um, at the, uh, <laughs> the camp timers. <sighs> oh, makes yeah, me sad. Yeah, I don't know. The, it, it's not the best. Yep. Oh, Bean is winning nice this, this first couple minutes of the lane. Um, and Noam is playing against a very experienced Renekton player. Um, I love Noam to death. I have shared my thoughts on his top lane. I think it doesn't come to him as naturally as some other roles, so we'll have to see how he pulls it out. Um, unfortunately, I was not able to get to play um, bot lane with Noam here. That was the original plan, but uh, Joel had something come up last minute. 
Um, I, I love me some Jacob bot lane though, so that did kind of pan out. Yeah, and I mean, or oh. as long as you're not like chain Chusini feeding. flash queuing isn't able to hit it. Um, that's the easiest ability in the game to hit. So I don't, I don't know how he missed it. And huge hook coming oh, down nice. to Jacob that's there, nice. and then Flay is actually able to hit both. And Stav, nope. Sarvis, I need to stop. Someone needs to give me a lobotomy. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, <laughs> Sarvis, really good Mundo first Care might there. be right for you. Oh my God. Shout out to our sponsor, Mundo Care. Yeah. <laughs> like... Yeah, this has been a very eventful early game. Mid lane duking it out, you know, testing each other's mechanics. Top lane playing super aggro, and you know, with so with a two v two kill bot lane. And nice. yeah, another That's good hook coming out from and... Mythic here. He's playing so well so far. And Sarvis looking to walk up and get another kill. He gets us both oh, really low. Heal comes out, like and now he's actually though, picked up. Jinx getting getting excited, walking up, excited, looking for a kill but... here. Uh, camera panning away not probably means yeah, that I'm not no sure kill. If he, uh, not sure if he hit the W or not, but I'm going to assume that he missed. But yeah, these death sentences from from Mythic are really running the server right now. So, or, and by the server, I mean bot lane. Yep. Noah really, walking really up pretty scary, aggressively here, but... trying to get a brittle proc. Um, Renekton does have deceptive range, slice and dice. Uh, if he can hit these extra minions, could be a really good gap close, but no, I'm playing it back pretty safe. Yeah, especially since this Orn has that Dorn shield, and I'm not sure if he has second win. Probably not, but... Yeah, we can, he we will, can check real quick. He, he does not. Healing. He's got bone plating. Okay. Against Renekton, that's probably more correct yeah. anyways, but... um. Like almost like he's predicting a flash, but I respect it. It does go a little wide, takes half his health, but... It is getting super chip, but with Twitch here, this might be able to be a kill, especially since she just used her E, as Syndra stun does go wide. Flash hook, and he's gonna make the Seraphine have to burn Flash as well. Flash for Flash trade, you're usually gonna take that as Thrash. Especially on a mobile character like Seraphine that you want to maybe try and find some lethal on in this early game. Both junglers sitting topside. Lillian not realizing that she's on a ward. She instantly gets cut down to half HP. She gets knocked up by the Orn, and that's just going to be a kill. But now Gnome is in danger, but without anything to be able to close the gap, he does have to burn Flash. Wow, of course he's able to pick it up, him though. Getting the, cla the kill, but the <laughs> is going to him from fall. getting the clap? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's quite what you meant. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know what I said. <laughs> um, I haven't played by playing this entire time. I, I haven't played by played in like six months. I'm a little rusty. But um <laughs> like the Orin clap, yeah the brittle for Yeah yeah, I don't know, I get what you meant. <laughs> that was funny though. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> New fear unlocked. At the, at the end of the day, it is going to be a double kill going on to that Wukong. I was about to say accelerating his Divine Sunder, but that has not been in the game that, for no. like <laughs> six months. Oh my god. It's over. What does Wukong even build anymore? Triforce? Sundered Sky? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's uh, basically Divine Sunder. It just looks different. Um, but now yeah. Wukong is going for these grubs. Uh, Korn's going to be able to walk down, and I think Lillian, Wuk uh, Lillian Renekton is going to make it tough, but he can probably just grab one and get over the yeah, pit here. Especially with the, especially with the Renekton having ult. Oh, but a little bit, bit of a miscommunication here. No one's popping the ulti yeah. as Julian's running away. Now 1v1's breaking out on the bot side of the map. I believe Twitch wins this if it's proc. extended. Twitch is but... going to absolutely fry the Jinx. Yeah, no way the Jinx can really do that. anything about that. I mean... Yeah, I mean, he's on a back with items, and the Jinx is uh, still component tribal. Looks like uh, this Jinx just wants to center tower, maybe wait for... Wait for the Seraphine, try and click the wave. Not taking a base timer yet. Yeah, and Korn going in, very aggressive trade, is going to take a tower shot here, and Noam getting a lot of brittle, brittle procs brittle down. Proc, yeah, this is a pretty unfavorable trade for okay. Renekton. But uh, yeah, this is the power of Orn. 
super tanky and is still able to just lay out that damage if you allow to allow him to take the hit them brutal the, those claps if you yeah. let him clap you, you... okay well lux and ulti without down. needing to hit binding so i don't know maybe the ulti oh, is easier to hit than the q who really knows Sarver is walking up trying to get something done but not really able to find anything you kind of need a thresh hook to hit there Slice in order to find the kill but no one playing and super and well Noah here has no ulti for... so it's gonna be tough yeah. Kill isn't going to come through, but I mean, Noam is actually, this should be close to a solo kill, but Ultimate is going to be expended. And if he tries to walk up into the wall, then he's going to get hit uh. with the knockoff. And oh, unfortunately, a little misplayed by Noam. I think there was lethal there, but he does oh, need to be careful. He might be able to get it. He has Brittle proc. All he needs to do is auto him. No flash available, so the Brittle proc is going to expire, and his ultimate is not up e in any meaningful amount of time. So both top laners are going to be able to walk that off. Yeah, and no one walking up. No mana, and though. No mana, no mana. He's trying to stop the base. He might have enough for Q. And no, Corn oh. stops his base. Wow, Walks that's... down, drops a ward. Kind of ballsy from Corn, but... Now Corn's going to be able to dash in. He's gets the sun off. Gonna take it. Oh, and the Q should be able to kill. Stun, but... And... Oh, he just picks and he's it up with not auto. in tower range, so that is going to be a solo kill for Corn. Yeah, I mean, this orange just having no mana is really playing its toll. But... Yeah, I mean, I know that you want to stop the back, but it's just so heartbreaking <laughs> to watch him get killed yeah, here. You, this game really is pretty solidly in DDD's favor, but anything can happen. It's still really early in the game. Um, and this next dragon could be um, a turning point, but it's not up for another four minutes. Bean caught out way here but the bind is missing uh and now the double ulti combination is into the lux laser but yeah, yeah. i don't it's, know it's uh, crazy how you see me can miss wide, like the so. easiest ability in the game you know like oh yeah. it's, it's lux q like i mean i always thought that ability was like really slow and kind of easy to miss but the gospel has stated that it's just <laughs> unmissable, so I, 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 I learned something new today. And Mythic is rooted here, but it's hard for Jinx to walk up, especially with a Twitch uh, with ultimate. Um, he's going to be quite deadly. Building towards this Bork first, I think, um, which makes sense with an Ornn and the Wukong on the team. You want that extra max HP damage. Although Wukong is building Brutalizer first, I don't know what that might be that might be another early cyclo sword uh i don't know these build paths yet yeah i'm not completely sure what brutalizer builds into i only know that it builds into Sherelda's garage but i don't think that's that would be crazy <laughs> yeah double long sword makes me think dirk which makes me think cyclo sword if it builds out of the brutalizer so but i have no idea <laughs> yeah uh, Lux appears to be the strongest champion in the game right now, but uh, Renekton is also in a really good spot here, and that could be and really dangerous for this team, but that solo bolo. Sure. Korn looking for one of his own, but it's going to be really tough with Tower present. He can probably just try and pressure for a plate here. We gotta watch Mythic's hooks. He's actually able to find one on oh, the Jinx Under Tower, is cleansed, and gonna she's just going to walk away close. here. Yeah, I mean, this Thresh is just... I mean, he's not missing, like, even one or two, one or two landed hooks can just make lane completely feel unplayable, and you can almost see that reflected in the fact that, uh, Ada Carry CS is the way that it is. Jinx just does not feel comfortable walking up for these, uh, for these last hits. Yeah, Wukong's hoping to get this fourth grub, but Jonah's here to contest. It's just going to be a smite fight, and Julian doesn't have one, so this is 3-3 three, three on the grubs, not any advantage, um, for either team. Um, Noam and Korn trying to duke it out again, but we've seen how that goes when Noam doesn't have a tower to back him up. Misses the Brittle proc and is actually just getting engaged on, but that's not going to do much. And now Tsusini's just completely caught out here. Gets burst by the Syndra, who shouldn't be able to one-shot him. I'm not, not really sure how he pulled that off. <laughs> well, that, see, that, that was Twitch's damage, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, true, gotta true, be true. we gotta be fair. We have to be fair. Yeah. That, that was Twitch. She just stole the kill like a like a like a greedy mid laner. <laughs> yeah. Like 
you're playing a champion that does no damage, like, just give the kill to Twitch, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're so right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It um, would have actually given Twitch Bork, so I think there could be a legitimate <laughs> argument there. But Syndra is actually able to get Ludens off that, and I think that is a pretty important spike here. It allows her to kind of compete with this Lux, who had already had that power spike, which was giving her a pretty solid advantage. Yeah, this is the power of uh, Inspiration Tree as well. The first strike and free boots, you know, basically completely evened up the mid lane items at this point. Just off of one kill plus first strike gold plus getting that boots, which is 300 gold for free. So, I mean, this Alex really doesn't have too much of an advantage. She still does have a level up, but in terms of items, they're sitting quite even. And another and hook over the wall, completely hook. blind. And he Going does get play. a little bit too far. Now he gets rooted over. I'm not sure if he should have taken that one, but now he's in big trouble. Julian's on top of him. He's able to find that kill. Jinx running into the threshold, getting slowed down pretty severely. And Sarvis looking for maybe something in huge knockback from uh, Syndra. Scatter, I know what it's called. Uh, Jonah Scatter falling down pretty low here. Tusini looking for something, but does not have that ultimate available to him. Although it is coming back on cooldown very quickly. This next dragon is up. These four champions could look to go up for it, but they're all super low health. No ultimate available from Twitch means they're pretty safe. But a Syndra ultimate is available, which shouldn't be able to kill anyone. But there's always a chance. Um, Sarvis falling down super low. Tusini able to pick him up. And now Jinx walking in super far and is able to get picked up by Syndra there. Yeah, Jinx holes got adequately plugged by by Syndra. Yeah, I insert the fuck out of that play. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be real. Yeah, you're walking point blank against Syndra with ulti. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, even without ulti, all she had to do was auto me to finish up that combo. <laughs> but Jacob and Julian are now two manning this dragon. Should be a pretty easy pickup. Um, Jonah's in the area, and now it is just mid lane all over again in the bot lane. Binding is able to hit, oh, and that ulti is just gonna take her out. And Jonah just looking a bit too late to get over the wall. Other dragon able to be secured. And this game is basically dead even. You have a higher kill number on the side for laundry, but that doesn't actually mean anything when golden dragons are both even, as well as the grubs. Although Korn looking to get this tower, getting a lot done here, does take one brittle proc, two, and that is the third brittle getting a lot of damage down, but no one misses the Q. Oh, flash Ws and is flash gonna pick w it up. Really well played from Gnome. You know, people people disrespecting the Gnome top lane, but he says, no, I I may not be known for my top lane, but I can play Orn. Nice solo bolo. <laughs> That's not the compliment you think it is. What? Orn takes mechanics, bro. He That's got the true. Triple, That's he true. got the triple knockoff or the triple, the triple clap. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, I agree that that was a good play. It just the way you said it sounded really funny. You're like, well, people say top lane sucks, but like, he, he might be <laughs> able to play Orn. That's not what I said. You are. No, I'm not really no. no, he made a good right play. I just, it was funny that you were. He's it. not known for his top. He's known for like support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And other role. You said that he wasn't <laughs> like that. He didn't play top at the beginning of this game. Yes, so I know. I, I know. I, it was a call back to that, and he solo killed it. Right. It was just funny that instead of saying like he's making this Orn look good or like he's playing the show this Orn, you're like he might be able to play Orn. <laughs> <laughs> like a pro man can play or no i agree i think he played really well now he is caught out a little bit here but he's kind of baiting for julian to show up and i think coin gets the read on it and just walks away to see me dealing so much damage not able to find the one shot though but could just throw out an ability here not gonna find either of them both are gonna go wide yeah uh, Jonah saw that Hongbaba was subbed out this game and did order some DoorDash. Uh, had to fill the role somehow. Noam walking in, is getting the Brittle proc, getting ulted on by Korn, and Noam falling down super low. Jacob's here to help, could get the shield off. Jacob flashing into shielding range. Noam running away from him, though. He's not able to get it off. And now Korn is locked up just a little bit, but he's going to get pulled out of there by the Thresh, and that's a 1 for 0 going over to the Croc. Yeah, and the, the Seraphim Flash being expended as well is really unfortunate. When you're playing an enchanter like that, it's really nice to be able to have your flash up, especially when, you know, characters like Twitch and uh, Renekton can potentially get on you. Or you might need to flash like a Thresh Hook or something, so... Herald is going to be the prize for that frag, so... But... PL is able to get this bot turret, trading for their mid turret, so I mean, overall this game is just neck and neck. Uh, 1,000 gold lead going to the side of PL, actually, but um... Dude, Lux ulti is just OP, like... 
Apparently Zareth ulti never hits and Lux ulti always hits. Yeah, so. I mean, Tusini has been making this champion look as good as Psycho Carry says it is. Um, one maybe, would think maybe that maybe Psycho Carry was like playing yeah. on Mythic's account here, and that's how he's like picking up all this like Lux hate. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it was Profane Hydra getting picked up for Wukong. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I don't know. I didn't think of that. But now Jonah's Ooh, caught out here. Is okay. not going to get slowed down by the Jinx, but is just getting run down by this Wukong gets picked up before the ultimate is going to go off. Two wasted ultimates in that fight, the Lilia ult completely useless, and same with the Jinx rocket. But they're now trying to shove this wave in mid and open up the map a bit for Project Laundry. Yeah, getting those mid towers is pretty important. I'm not sure that they'll be able to get it with the Thresh and the Twitch being there, but if they do manage to get it, maybe with the assistance of Rift Herald, then... Yeah, now Twitch is here dropping the ultimate. Thresh goes in and just drops a full combo. Sarvaris getting shielded very heavily here. Guardian and um that looks OP healed. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> the Guardian is like the most OP rune in the game. That's what I'm understanding from watching these games. Noam yeah, somehow is still able to hit that ramp. That Orn play is fucking crazy. Noam does know his Orn. Um, he does get the what's it called, like, just subjugate? Gonna pick it up. What, what is Renek ability? Is it like subjugate or something? Uh, Dominus. Subjugate's oh, okay. trundle. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah. Being able to get that ultimate off. Sorry, I'm looking for a play just... here. Almost in range, but Jacob sniffs it out and just backs away. Yeah, Thresh posturing a little bit too, uh, too forward, and they figured out something was up, so... Yep. And the Croc has been the big point for this team, but you really can't count out um, Sarvis here. He's 160 CS, almost uh, on par with this Lux here. Um, doesn't quite have a second item. Um, looks like he's slightly ahead of the Jinx, though, in terms of itemization. Jinx able to get some benefit from towers taken around her. That's the only reason that he's not completely obliterating me, um, I fear. But the Runance is picked up, um, and having that crucial spike is going to help him a lot on this dragon that's about to spawn. Syndra is face checking this. Does sniff it out, though, with the, uh, with the Q. Cloud Soul would be really nice for both teams, especially both junglers and top laners in specific this game. Lilia really appreciates the movement speed, as does the other. Renekton taking a little bit of poke before this fight starts off, but um, PL is actually being pretty heavily zoned off of this, um, off this dragon, but... See how they're going to go about taking space. Rift Herald does get dropped by... I can't yeah, and yeah, like... Renekton getting onto the back of the fight is lighting up the Jinx here. She's probably going to fall down. Julian able to find a pick onto the Twitch, though. And Jinx somehow still alive. Corrin, looking for this chase, isn't able to find anything. Is just getting CC'd to all shit. It had a really good dive, but it was just just a bitch sword on the damage. And now Bean is able to flash and ult successfully here. Mythic falling down kind of low, but he's in a pretty good spot health-wise, and it's so hard for them to walk up here. But Tusini just able to grab another kill. But now Jonah looking for something. Jonah might be able to find either of these two champions. Sidestep from the Jinx coming out. Jonah just going to grab a flash and go in, but he's going to die to tower for it. I'm not sure if that's worth it. This Jinx has been inting this game, but Tusini throws his ability in the wrong way and is going to die to the Lilia, so Jonah made it worth it there. Um, this dragon is falling over to the side of DDD, though. Yeah, this is a very hectic team fight. I cannot <laughs> PvP team fights like that for my life. <laughs> I'll leave that to you, but, um, a little, little bit of self, self roast on the Jinx, but I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean. I'm malfunctioning right now, oh my god. Yeah, I mean, I think this <laughs> two days of casting has taken a toll on our brains. <laughs> Hopefully, it's really enjoyable to listen to because I'm having a hell of a time <laughs> casting it, so. My Gotta mouth is out. like no longer like my I'm not I'm, my mouth is not saying the words that are in my head. It's like I'm just like malfunctioning, just like overloading. But um, yeah. yeah Bean looking for a poke. He hits a crazy combo on the horn and deals about 50 damage. <laughs> <laughs> um, top laner versus mid lane is always funny when there's a tank involved. There are three like, people top looking for this. Um, it looks like the Jinx is trying to get baited um, for their Renekton, but I really doubt that Korn's going to pick the bait. He's a very solid player. Um, doesn't tend to make dumb mistakes like that. Has the most farm in the game. Um, very intimidating. 
for sure. The rush about to walk over a ward here is spotted out, um, but Julian did just complete his back, so he's not going to be around for this. I don't think either team has Baron pressure here. But no, yeah, I mean, game just slowed down a bit. Yeah, does have TP up, so I mean, the one advantage that, on the map that they're going to have here is that DDD has TP on the Syndra, and Orin is matching without TP, so there could be a fast play, especially with all the flashes being expended. Lux does land the root. Yeah, I think Sarvis is going to get caught out here. Jinx ult hitting from across Sarvis the map. It allows Julian to get this kill, and now Bean actually shows up and gets a huge play, gets two kills here, and maybe this is DDD's chance back in the game. They've evened out the gold lead, and they could just look for a Baron here. 4-3 advantage, and they're just going to go ahead and start it up. Yeah, especially Orn wasn't call. in the fight, does have ultimate available here, and with Jinx presence, something could be done. Tusini just do took a, a base, and now he's teleporting in, though. Switch. No, I'm hitting it! And again, Lux oh, ult does no damage. Room. Guardian, OP. Guardian is just broken, but yeah, without the Twitch, they just don't have the damage to... To really like threaten this Baron, especially with the Orn not having... Or Orn having his ultimate ability up, so... Yeah, and this yeah, is two of. item spikes hit for a couple members of the top side of PL. So even though they died and weren't around for that, they're still at a pretty um, good spot damage-wise. But now Bean with that double kill is able to pick up um, the death cap. So he's in a really good spot too. Well, I, I don't know. My Phantom Dancer. What? I, I feel like it's what everyone buys on Jinx. I don't know. Is it? Is it? I'm pretty sure. Oh, it is. Okay. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the move speed is really good. I don't really know. Did they I don't, just like buff it or something? It's possible. I thought it was really bad. I have not played enough of the new items to know what's good, so I just went off <laughs> guides. You know how it is. No, that's what I would have done. Yeah. Wait, this build has a 60% win rate. How OP is Jinx right now, bro? Uh, good, I think. I mean, not good into Twitch, but that's how the champion works. Sounds like Twitch is just good to everybody. Yeah. I accept Lucian, I guess, right? That's what we saw. Yeah. And Nila. I don't know. I think t Twitch is generally considered good as a counter pick, but um, I think some of the ADC's pools uh, are a little bit small, so people can blind it, or maybe it's just like the Twitch one trick effect. I don't really know. Something, something's in the water in this tournament. The uh, bilge I probably, water, I so to speak. probably wouldn't want to play into like uh, Draven. That sounds pretty bad. Yeah. I was told to play Draven this tournament. Um, you might see it. Who knows? I might see it? Uh, yeah. Is that spoilers for how this ends? No. <laughs> because there's a chance know. you don't see it because you just fucking throw this game. <laughs> well, I mean, you're down gold right now. So... You know, I, I am griefing, bro. <laughs> yeah. Listen, you said it, not me. Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, we are desperately missing Teddy here. Um, no, no, I'm a good replacement for Joel, though. I think I think we're doing pretty solid up in that that realm. Yeah, I mean, he's really good at Orn. And apparently, that's right. a that's a insult. <laughs> that's not what he said the first like time, that. though. <laughs> uh, I think that's still Mol Molten Edge. Is that what it's called? Oh, no, they, just, they don't have funny names no, they, anymore? No, Fuck. They, no, they don't. It's so stupid. They it's hate stupid Orn players, man. Can, you can upgrade every legendary item now, and they were like, it's too hard to like come up with a line of text to give all the Oh my god. Out. Like, like, so they just removed all, like, how lazy uh. are you? Like, we can't, like, come on. That's embarrassing. Yeah, a for a seal to come through, and they made really good use of the Thresh Lantern to just get him out. Didn't have to burn a Thlash or anything. That is one of the nice advantages of having a Thresh. Um, Thing of the blast zone over. You, you don't need your jungle leader to necessarily have a dash. He gives them more. Pretty good. Ah, infinity but... Edge parentheses masterwork. Ah. No, it's tilting. Ah. I hate it. It's so tilting. Like it's disgusting. Ah. <laughs> it's just no, but no, but the, they're too lazy to do that. But by the way, with the new champion Aurora, if you are playing, because like Orn and her have like lore or whatever, like they're yeah, right now, like. If you There's upgrade, a mission, right? No, if you upgrade her death cap. Oh my god. It's called Rabbit Dawn's death cap, oh, yeah. and it has a new icon. As a programmer, cool. this straight up takes more work, by the way, because you're coding a custom interaction into the game instead of changing the name of items. So. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> like. 
So oh the, my god. And it has a new and it has a new icon. So like it's what? A, a That's even more hat. fucking worse. Yeah. So it's like, it, oh it's like a god. different icon and it, it like it matches like her aesthetic. Like it's a different looking hat. So like they did that because like oh it's cute and more. But oh, wait, like, wait, please tell me that she's like a, a rabbit that looks like the the guys from Peaky Blinders and she's got like the, the Irish cap on. That's that would be hype. Like, do you not know what she looks like? Have you <laughs> no, no, I, as I said, I'm a little out of touch on League. The only thing I knew about her was that Honan posted that thing and then he spoiled it, so I didn't even read it. But oh, I'll, on here's like three images of her, I guess. I should know. I'll DM you. Actually, no, no, no. I'm I'm retired from Twitter. I, I don't need to see it. I'll wait until League reveals it officially. Oh, okay. Well, I marked it with a spoiler because I'm an okay, R cool. slash nice I'll, I'll, guy. I'll click on it once it comes out. <laughs> also, I think you just undid any sort of credit you had by saying R slash in front of that. But <laughs> Sarver is now wrapping around looking for a play here. They are out of vision. If Mythic hits a hook, which he's been doing... Ah, never mind. He tried. One. And now Mythic might be caught out here. Lux Q does land, and Jacob able to continue the stun. Jinx is in the area, not able to hit the W, but Julian looking for a play onto Jonah. And Mythic's just taking so much damage here. The ultimate should come out from Jinx here, and it's just going to get body blocked by Korn. Really good dash there. Um, I did spoil a little bit, but Korn dashed really well there, and I wanted to highlight it. <laughs> Bro's the goat. Bro, casting your own game, you, you know what's going to happen? Like Yeah. I don't enjoy doing it, but uh, small suffering from success or something, I don't know. I don't even know what success is being had here. Yeah, well, uh, Owning a computer to be jinx? able to cast League of Legends, which is a net <laughs> negative, I think. Uh, now that mid lane 1v1 cool. is coming back, Bean not able to find any abilities here. I cannot believe you face checked that bush like five seconds ago, like in front of your horn. <laughs> Uh, there's a reason we're down 2k gold, and it's mostly my fault. We're up two dragons, though, and um, Reddit, I believe, does argue that each dragon is worth a thousand gold, so... Game state is pretty even. Um, Cloud Soul isn't anything crazy, but it's really good for Wukong, um, and I think that is what is going to matter in this um, state of the game. Can, can help with the spacing on these mobile carries, which is always nice. Like. Yeah, I mean, Lux, Jinx, Seraphine, you got zero movement abilities through the three of them. Or you have one yeah. for each of them, but it's on a five minute cooldown. <laughs> <laughs> Seraphine double W gives movement speed to herself. Yeah. I think, oh, so. Flash is forced out by Tusini there. Um, had to flash the Lilia ball or he would have been slept. Um, and and that, now that Mythic's walking sure down pretty friend. aggressively, looking for some sort of hook behind Pit, but no, he's just taking the blast gun away. That's probably the smarter move than being <laughs> crazy aggressive. Yeah. <clears throat> Julian showing us why his Wukong is 7 0 with like a 9 KDA. Like a 7 KDA? Whatever it was. I think it was like 9, it's like 8 points. But yeah, I mean. In terms of team fight, again, this PO draft, you can see they're really like drafting. Oh, and Sarvis flashing oh, forward, giving so much damage now, but he gets hit by the Seraphine ultimate, and he's just gonna die. He finds nothing. That's so yeah, he unfortunate. Got them all down so low, but I mean the Seraphine W plus heat, it's just enough to make them barren. Taxi, you're lacking out to all shit. Can you disconnect, or reconnect? Hopefully that'll fix it. And Baron is getting started here. Oh, that, that was actually my Discord's fault, I'm pretty sure. That's my bad. You, you were good. I think Discord, I think Discord was dying a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but this is a objective trade here. Dragon's being picked up for DDD. PL is able to get Baron, which I do believe is the much better um, oh, objective yeah, for here. Sure. Especially because it's only their second dragon on the side of DDD. So, I mean, yeah. they do deny soul, but paying the price for a Baron is... Not a price you like to pay, but I mean, denying that soul might come in clutch later, especially if they can just defend this Baron. I mean, the gold is still pretty even, only a 100 gold lead on the side of PL, especially after getting a Baron. It's not a big deal. I mean, gold is being taken pretty heavily right now, but we do expect to be some kind of swing, but... 
Uh, yeah, and Sarvis looking for a play onto Jacob just gets dumped on, but Bean actually Holy able to find the crap. damage here and Sa Sarvis able to pick up the kill uh, yeah. onto Jacob there at the end of that fight. Getting yeah, that a two for crazy. one, which is super high value. Gets them the yeah, gold lead back in their advantage. On the, especially because you get it on both the bot laners, like that's basically two thirds of their siege. Lux being the only other siege, like. Yeah, denying barons um, is always very good. Yeah, the the only people with barons left really is people that have to put themselves in a dangerous position to hit those towers. So I mean, other than Lux, of course, right? But yeah, that that's a pretty big hit. Especially since it looked like that Twitch was just going to get one shot and die, but the, it was a good stun from Sinjaro, you know, Twitch lived on one health and managed to get his heal off. And... Yeah, so many of the fights in this game have really come down to the wire. It's been a really good game. Both of these teams are super close. I feel like either yeah, of these teams sure. would deserve to be able to make it to the Fearless um, BO3. Uh, knowing what you know about the players, which I think might not be as much for some of them, who do you think would be more fun to watch in the Fearless? Just in terms of champ pools. Um, I don't know. I think both teams have a lot of uh, like nice things to watch, but I, I would like to see a champion other than Twitch. So hopefully <laughs> it gets banned. Yeah, I mean Stav is in the the final, so I would imagine that probably just gets banned out uh, first game or picked. So you only have to watch one game of it, um, and. He falls down so low and really is not going to get taken down by Jinx there. I think a crit would have done it. Um, three and a half items for both Jinx and Twitch. They're even in this game despite um, Sarvis playing the much better game. And Korn doing his best to push out these waves in the top lane. Orin did have to base to stop Syndra from continuing this push. She was able to find that very valuable side lane tower, um, but not much else. These double cannons have gotten so much damage down. One of them just died, but there's actually a third one that just showed up. Um, the siege from this team is incredible. And they're now walking out, trying to grab these jungle camps out of the way. And this Lilia Ball is going to find Jacob. And a flash stun coming out flash from Syndra Beam stun, going crazy here. Corn gets rooted up, but Sarvis is just behind. And now Julian's going into the fight. Susini trying his best to get out. And... Uh, I don't know if going in there was the right move. DDD finding their way back into this game in a big way. They're still down a little bit in gold, but they have so much map pressure, and with three dead, they're going to be able to make it up. Yeah, the... PL is just sticking out over a little bit too long after that successful, successful siege and just committing to a bad fight in, you know, wrong side of the jungle. And Yeah, there have been a few games, or a few fights this game, where Orin just hasn't been there. Uh, he's always shown up and made something big happen afterwards, but there's just nothing to fight over, so I don't think he's going to be able to do it. Um, Noam yeah, is such an important need, part of this team, and an fighting TP, without it. I think. Yeah, I think we need to see an insta-TP from Noam. I'm not sure if he just didn't have a ward, but... um. Yeah, I mean, I would guess that this one would have been up, but I don't know, it's tough. Yeah. Uh, all of the Masterwork items are completed, and I don't, except for Jacob's, and I can't even know what they're called. Never mind, just finished it. Donkor is upgraded to give 110 ability power, which is, that's, that's something. A lot. Um, Noam is saying that his TP was three seconds off when the fight broke out. Oh, that's or unfortunate. Or maybe when the fight ended, something. Yeah, One of the two. that's unfortunate. Yeah. It's okay. Sure, no one knows I don't read timer. Twitch chat, so he's not sending it, Matt. <laughs> he also said it in Twitch chat. <laughs> he said three seconds off when it ended, so just enough on cooldown. And now they're posturing. They're trying to find a flank here, but no one face checking this time instead of me, as you point out. And no one finds three, but it doesn't matter. Bean able to get so much damage out. Now Corn's looking for something. They're taking some damage into CD, able to just completely one shot Sarvis, but he's taken out of the fight by the Syndra. And now Noam going in, getting a lot of damage down. Corn looking onto the backside. He's able to get on top of Jinx, maybe, but he's just getting put in the bounce castle. Now he gets to stun off. It's cleansed, and he's just getting kited back into tower. And the flash is burned. I'm not sure if it had to be. He started walking away before the Jinx burned the flash, but. I don't know. Important to keep that Jinx alive just to have this threat available. Um, reset could be coming out here, but Dragon's on the table. This would spell soul for Project Laundry, and that could give them the power they need to give themselves a foothold in this game, but Bean has been putting in so much work in the late game, looking stronger than the Lux, even though he suffered a lot in lane. Yeah, and there's no smite currently in the pit, so... Uh, Jonah flashing in! He's yeah, not able to find it, though. The Zonius does come out. 
Jinx traps are going to keep him in there. He doesn't have the flash. He already burned it. And they're able to find Jonah, too. That means that there's not going to be a jungle alive for the majority of this timing for the Baron. Uh, Julian tried it back in place, but the ward there allowed Bean to spot him. He just needs to pop the clone. And now they're going for a reset. They might be able to group up on Baron here, but with uh, Bean and Twitch both on full health, it's going to be scary. I mean, oh my with God. this Cloud Soul taken, they Taxi? are going to have a really... <laughs> Yeah, what's it up? took me seven games to just start calling him Twitch and not say, say the fucking name. <laughs> no, Jesus. No, that's real. I just say the champion names like. I'm normally so good but, about um, it though. <laughs> but um, I, I call you. I either call you what your IGN is, or like if I like really know your name, I don't like I cycle between calling him Serb Jew and Julian. Yeah. But, um, yeah, with these Cloud Souls, though, it does allow PL to get back on the map really fast to start to put pressure on the vision around Baron. And yeah, Lilio Mythic could find now. a hook here. Jacob's just over the wall. He's been known to hit some over the wall. Um, not actually going to find it. He's spotted out. And now the Baron is just started up. Twitch is the one to watch. Korn is showing on the bot side of the map. Does have the TP available to him. They just need to mark that if he's coming through. And there goes the TP. Traps are put down directly on top of it. I'm not sure if he's actually going to hit by those. And yeah, he does. And now Julian looks for the engage on him. No, I'm able to find three with his ultimate. Not doing any damage. And now Tucini lights up. Uh, the Seraphine ulti coming down just a bit late. Not able to find anyone. But Lux able to find the kill on the Twitch. And it looks like they're just giving up on the Baron. And they might go for an end here. I don't think DDD's yeah, I mean, able to stop them. They only have two up, yeah, and they're just shoving three the middle down. Lane. And this, uh, the Jinx is trying to stop bases, but I mean, it's going to be rough, especially with Orn stopping this base yeah. now. He's not going to be able to do no, anything. No, I'm just he keeping him up in the air. Inhib is taken, and Jinx gets her resets with a passive, able to find yet another one, and, and now just, just runs with game, the passive. Yeah. And yeah, this should That's just end the game PL. here. Advancing into the Fearless bracket stage, which will take place. Tomorrow. Does it take place? Tomorrow? Okay, yeah. so. And yeah, unfortunately, this live. is the play. end of DDD there, going 1 3 over the course of the tournament, but do not uh, knock this team at all. They played so well. Really fun team to watch. Um, Sarverus uh, played way better than you would think, considering I'm calling him the wrong name, but <laughs> uh, I purely mean it as a compliment. Bro was playing out of his mind. Mythic had an insane Thresh game here, and Bean made Syndra look like a good champion unlike what uh honin has uh promoted but yeah but i mean both teams played really well but i mean at the end of the day in a game of league of legends one team does have to win and one team does have to lose and i mean unfortunately for ddd they do take the loss but i, I think this is a loss so you can keep your head held high during like unfortunately you do miss that fearless but i mean i, I think they played really well like they got edged out a little bit towards the end there like that baron for soul deny was really unlucky and then those like super later team fights like jinx gets one kill and it just feels really hard to really you know challenge but i mean especially with lux in the background just dishing out deep so overall just a really entertaining i think that's probably the best series the like best match that we've seen through this tournament so far i don't know that 50 minute banger in the first round that was, was a good, banger but... that was a banger no that game was so close and just one team fight is the one to do it corn thought he had a really good flank there but he just gets caught out by the traps and um julian follows up really well and no i'm able to keep the rest off uh with that ultimate that was immediately followed up by the lux ultimate and the seraphine one just to <laughs> make sure that uh everybody else gets hit but um, no, really clean game by, by both teams. Just one of those ones that one mistake um, will bring the end to it, which I don't know. I enjoy it. That was, that was what got me uh, into League right at the beginning. And I think uh, we are kind of getting back to that um, at the beginning of my time with League. So season six, season seven. But um, I like the new items. I think they're creating for some really fun games. And I'm excited to see a whole season of this. Um, Fearless Draft tomorrow is going to be a little bit different from what we'll see um throughout the season but i'm super excited for it hopefully we can get another taxi cast uh, i can ta i can cast it live if you want me to oh oh the games already took place on sunday oh wait you already played them yes yeah yeah oh oh so well yeah i'll cast tomorrow then <laughs> okay <laughs> sorry i <laughs> thought i phrased that well but no 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 um yeah so they took place right after uh the game that we just watched but oh, okay. yeah, so tomorrow is going to be a rematch of um, Project Laundry versus uh, Rat. Um, PL 0-1 versus them um, in uh, the tournament series. So we'll have to see 
if they're going to be able to get their revenge or if Rat's just going to be able to stand true. PL does have momentum coming into it, which, or yeah, PL does have momentum coming into it, which Rat had last time and that helped them win. So we'll have to see if PL is going to be able to clutch it or if what's Rat's going to be able to pull it out. The, um, what's the rules for the <clears throat> fearless draft? Is it if any champion chosen by your team, you're not allowed to pick again? No, or any, it, champion any champion by both teams. Any champion picked or banned by either team is fully disabled for draft for the rest of the series. Oh, that's like, that's like, like, yes. full fearless. So you will see full, full 60 yeah. or 40 different Unique. champions throughout the duration of the series, depending on how many that's games a, are played. It's a lot. Yes. That's crazy. That's, that's going to be a fun cast. Yeah. I hope it goes to game three. That's my, I, I, I just hope it goes to game three. Yep. I believe it went to game three um, last season so if you do want to watch that that should be up on the youtube channel um but i don't know fearless is always fun good stuff and i do got to sign off right now so thanks again to taxi for the cast hope everyone had a blast watching it all right peace peace peace